Hey, it's Brock here with Rock Hill Farms, and I'm out here today to have a conversation about the different transmission options that are available to us when we purchase a tractor. So there are basically three types, or really if you want to get technical, there are two types of transmissions you can get on a tractor. You've got the hydrostat and the gear drive. There are a lot of variations and types of gear drives, but we'll get into that in a minute. So I spent all day today going around to different dealerships of different brands and trying to understand how their gear drive transmissions work, asking the salesman what the advantages to getting a gear drive or a shuttle shift transmission are, and it was kind of interesting seeing the different configurations and hearing their answers. But we'll start by talking about hydrostat because that's, you know, that's what most compact tractor owners have. And a hydrostatic transmission, as most of you know, is very simple to operate. When I got my tractor, my younger son was 14, I believe, and he came out here and it took me about 30 seconds to tell him how to run it, and he could just jump in it and go. It's probably easier to drive this than it is a car. And hydrostat, without a question, is the most convenient option if you're doing frequent start and stop type work loader work, if you've got a pile of rock that you want to take from here and move it 30 feet and spread it out, or moving firewood rounds, or a lot of the type of work that most of my viewers probably do, there's nothing better than a hydrostat because you have a forward pedal and a reverse pedal, or you have a treadle pedal for the Kubota guys, but you have, you just push a pedal to go forward, you push a pedal to go back. You almost never, I never touch the brake hardly to operate unless I'm stopping on a hill because when you let off the pedal it just stops. Very convenient. Now the question is if hydrostats are so convenient why would you look at anything else? Well I think there are a couple reasons. The first point I would make is that your large tractors are not even available in hydrostat and there's a reason for that. I've actually speculated between two main reasons for that. The first being that it's harder to make a hydrostat with that much power. And for a long time, I thought they just can't make one. But then I realized I don't think that's it at all. I, it, that could be a part of it, or it could be cost prohibitive to make those bigger hydrostats. But I think a big part of it is that those guys running a big tractor, a hundred horse ag tractor, they're not making constant stop and start. They're doing long runs and it's actually more convenient to have a gear drive transmission in those cases. So what I'm really talking about today is the spot in between. Maybe 35 horse and below is only available in hydrostat. Maybe 70 horse and above is only in gear drive. What if you want a tractor between 40 and 70? They're usually available in both. So why would you choose a gear drive? Number one option, it's cheaper. Second reason is that you're specifically wanting to do tasks that involve these longer runs. The third reason is, my opinion, and what I've been told by some of the salesmen, is that you transfer more of your horsepower directly to the wheels and to the PTO, and that you lose some of your power to the hydrostat. So now let's talk a little bit about the different types of gear drive transmissions. And I want to preface this by saying something that's going to immediately become evident, and that is I'm not an expert on the finer details or the mechanics of how these systems operate. So this is going to be kind of a broad overview of the information I've got from the salesman and my limited experience running them. So I've got a 1941 John Deere Model A up there. It's a very simple system. You push on the clutch and you have a gear selector. You have to come to a stop, push the clutch in, select a gear, and that's the gear you operate in. Simple as it gets. The advantage to a simple system like that is, once again, it transfers a higher percentage of the power to the wheels. Second advantage is, it's a less complex system. There is less to go wrong. And it allows your gear to control the speed of your tractor. And when you think about that aspect of the gear drive, it's kind of like my tractor has an electronic cruise control that I find a little bit cumbersome to use. It's a little bit finicky when I'm, I'm going one speed with the cruise control and I want to change to another speed. 
messing around with it. And um, that's having cruise control on a tractor sounds like this new thing, like, oh, it'll just go the same speed the whole time, and I don't have to con control my speed with the pedal. I'm like, you mean like every gear tra drive tractor ever made? So, as an example, I did a job where I mowed 49 acres. For that job, wide open spaces, I would have preferred to set it into gear, set the throttle, and mow at the same speed the whole time. So that's the basic pros and cons between the gear drive and the hydrostat. Now let's talk about the modern equivalent and why it exists. And the reason we have modern versions of these gear drive transmissions is because of the type of convenience that people want from a hydrostat, but they want it with the advantages of the gear drive. So with a gear drive transmission, if you're stopping and starting and forward and back a hundred times in an hour, that's going to be really annoying to stop every time you go into your rock pile and, and shift your lever. So now we have what's called a shuttle shift. With the shuttle shift, I can be going forward, go into my rock pile, flip a little lever next to the steering wheel, and it automatically goes into reverse without me pressing the clutch. And that makes it feel almost like it's a hydrostat. The most common shuttle shift I see is a 12 forward, 12 reverse. And that 12 gears is achieved by having three ranges and four speeds within each range. And to shift between ranges, you still have to stop and push in the clutch, which is no different really than the hydrostat. Because to go from low, medium, and high range in your hydrostat, you also have to stop. But that's the only time you have to stop to switch on the modern shuttle shift. So within each range, you've still got your four gears, and those gears are synchronized. And what that means is you don't have to come to a stop to switch gears. So if you go into medium range, one, you're in fifth gear. And you can be driving and say you want to shift up. You can go from, that's basically fifth gear. You can go to seventh without stopping. You'll push in the clutch and make your shift. One of the nicest of the shuttle shifts I drove today was the TYM 5835. I did a separate video on it last week from the National Farm Machinery Show, but it basically has three clutches on it. So if you're driving and you push in the clutch pedal, it takes it out of gear and you'll slow down and stop. If you pull your shuttle shift to neutral, same thing happens. You'll slow down and stop. And you can use that lever in the neutral position as a clutch. You've got a third one that is electric over hydraulic on your gear selector on this hand. That means if you're driving in fifth gear and you want to upshift, you push a little button right here and just move it into the next gear. And it felt very natural and fluid to do that. I rambled a little longer than I meant to about how these different transmission types work, but it brings me to my next point that I was thinking about today. I was looking at a lot of 50 to 60 horsepower tractors that can be purchased with a hydrostat, or you can save money and get it with a shuttle shift and get more of that power to your wheels. I was asking myself, which would I go for? And I thought, you know, if you get the really nice shuttle shifts that are really well set up, it's going to feel, once you get used to it, it's going to feel almost as comfortable as the hydrostat. Then I started thinking, are there downsides? Because we mentioned earlier that there are advantages to the hydrostat and there are advantages to the gear drive. The gear drive advantages was less moving parts and things to go wrong. And when you go electric over hydraulic, you might kind of lose some of that. Because I've got three clutches, two of them are electronic. So, I wonder what you guys think. I don't know if I provided any value with this video, but it's just what was on my mind today and I wanted to share it. So, I appreciate you taking time to watch the video. I'll put links on the screen to a couple more of our videos, and I'll see you next time.